I will uh, shortly uh, give some uh, presentation about the macroeconomic view, which is uh, related to international economics. And uh, I will just uh, uh, give an overview. We can combine afterwards the discussion from the microeconomic and the macroeconomic perspective of global development. The first argument is, as already mentioned uh, uh, today, nation states uh, lose of importance and we have to see at the same time global development going into a uh, entirety, a global entirety. Uh, there are many interrelations on economics, uh, on political sphere, but also in uh, uh, sports and things like this. So we have a lot of information and consciousness of the uh, emerging global entirety, which will uh, be uh, much stronger, let us say, in 20 years. Global governance is therefore confronted with a entirety and uh, we have to, uh, to select out from this entirety certain uh, crucial problems which are uh, seen from uh, the economy first the division between the society and the economy Polanyi is one of the exponents in this discussion. But within the economy, we have a divorce between the financial capital, the real productive capital, the natural capital, and evidently human capital. Human capital is not employed under present situation uh, because the other capitals have divorced and they are not compatible uh, in the actual uh, situation. At the same time, global limits enforce the economy and the subsystems of the financial, real capital, human capital, and so on, to cooperate. We have to look at the tendency in the uh, global development that there uh, are many interconnectivities which enforce to a global cooperation, and this global cooperation should be the point of reference for developing a structure for global governance. Uh, cooperation is enforced by global development, uh, not only on the, on the ecological side, but in, in many others uh, also. One uh, example is uh, the Paris Agreement, which resulted in some uh, discussion process uh, and the Sustainable Development Goals are uh, anchoring for uh, uh, important uh, uh, progresses on the communal, regional, global level and so on. What is much less discussed is the development of the financial and the real capital. Uh, so I think VAS should not concentrate on uh, the ecological uh, capital, but mainly on the uh, social capital, financial capital, real uh, uh, capital, real productive capital. A global constitution is important uh, for having a reference for different measures, but the global, uh, global constitution based on human rights and democracy, mainly the vo voting democracy, is rather empty without uh, re reference to the economic dynamics. So, uh, global governance is not a political problem, it's a politeconomic problem uh, in the tradition of uh, Adam Smith and people in the, at the beginning of industrialism. And therefore, uh, we should think of a global constitution which combines 
many cultural, psychological uh, dimension, but mainly political and economic dimension. Polit-economic uh, <coughs> governance is uh, possible if we have the reference system of a global constitution based on human rights and vote and democracy. I will shortly uh, uh, give you a few examples where national and nation states oriented policy destroyed uh, social and economic wealth in the history. The, the best uh, example is uh, uh, the two world wars which uh, lasted 30 years and which destroyed a third of the total uh, capital beyond the uh, human capital, uh, the physical uh, equipments were destroyed to 33 percent. There are estimations like this. Competition of nations produce finally after the struggles on the markets, finally wars. And wars destruct every uh, uh, accumulated wealth existing in the world. And this example shows we had in uh, the year two, uh, 1910 about the same degree of globalization than 1970. So within this period, we distracted by war and nation-states oriented policy such a lot of wealth. After the Second World War, we introduced the Bretton Woods Agreements. Uh, the Bretton Woods Agreements, the final target was uh, re-accumulate those destroyed capitals. Uh, and this uh, uh, re-accumulation was done mainly in the industrial world. Uh, Bretton Woods uh, agreements are definitely in favor of the industrial countries and not worldwide. Uh, the third uh, step in following such tendencies when the accumulation in the industrial countries was accelerated, you had an overaccumulation of capital in the industrial world. And this is the reason why we exported capital to the developing countries. Overaccumulation in industrial countries enhanced by the Bretton Woods agreements forces the industrial world to export capital to the developing countries. But this was very limited effective because the tricky town effects, uh, which were always discussed uh, in the 70s and uh, later, they were very limited. Uh, and the final step is, uh, which has been already several times uh, 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 intensively discussed is when the uh, real capital was more equally distributed in the world, it was necessary to finance, to, to produce money, financialization to have the demand, the global demand uh, for this increased uh, uh, capacity. They are still unevenly distributed, but the level, the global level of uh, our wealth uh, is enormously, has been enormously increased by these steps I shortly uh, made here. We have actually not a global war, but we have many, sometimes tiny wars, uh, but recurrently wars which distract wealth and we have to uh, regain by uh, financialization uh, a demand which, in, which allows 
that uh, uh, accumulation of capital still um, um, uh, goes on. We have cleaning crisis, local crisis in several states, but not a global war. The danger of a global war uh, is sometimes discussed. I personally think it's not so uh, urgent, but in any case, what is important from the point of view of economics, we are destroying wealth. We create it and we destroy it, not by wars only, but also by financialization, like uh, Rogoff and Reinhardt has uh, clearly demonstrated on several occasions. So, the third main point is uh, how can we preserve our wealth globally accumulated and uh, can go on further and the main argument is we have to reduce the divorces between financial capital, real capital, natural capital and human capital. So we have to recombine the existing wealth for protecting it from destruction and this needs a global government. And the global, uh, from the economic point of view, which is always linked to many uh, other uh, uh, aspects, not only politically, cultural and things like this, we know it all. So the main point is uh, reducing financial capital, reducing financial uh, 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 natural capital inputs for saving the planet, we can enhance the real productive capital, man-made capital, out of these uh, changes from financial capital and from natural capital. And this needs more human capital. We cannot re adapt the divorces between the capital without more human capital. So we are endogenously enforced to uh, considerably augment the human capital. And the human capital, there are many strategies uh, uh, which uh, can help in this respect, but the main point is to preserve the wealth and make a new combination of <coughs> uh, from these four capitals. Just a few words on it. Uh, productive capital can be enhanced, and you have made uh, several examples for this, by a coalition between uh, the workers and the management in firms, which is very important if they cooperate together like 100 years ago, it was domi the dominant feature. Actually, we have the cooperation between the financial capital and the management. And this destroys the human capital uh, and uh, at the same time, we need more qualification of the human capital and uh, we could, by human-centered uh, uh, education and uh, transferring from financial capital and from natural capital to human capital, we can uh, increase this potential, which means also that we have a humanized production system. It does not uh, bring much if we have more uh, productive capital if this destroys the human nature. And uh, for this reason, human-centered education is very important. But I think even more important is to go out from the cage, from the oppressive cage of the actual real productive system which is based on this combination financial capital and uh, management. So this has been uh, uh, destroyed. This uh, oppressive production system 
destroys uh, human capital and have uh, many, many further implications. So, a few final words. What is needed in any case is a fundamental change of the Bretton Woods uh, agreements, which means that uh, we are not reconstructing a destroyed, uh, destroyed capital, but we have to develop uh, a different steering system for the economy, which is different from Bretton Woods. Bretton Woods is a strategy to repair the damages of uh, the, the 30 years wars. And uh, we are not in the situation to repair, we have to develop and uh, uh, harmonize the existing wells uh, globally and so on. So, uh, this implies uh, a economic democracy. Uh, political democracy by voting is important, but if it is not uh, combined with a certain minimum of economic endowment for everybody, it has no value. For this uh, uh, a global constitution on the political sphere only is empty. Is empty and is no real progress. It has to be combined with an econom economic democracy uh, which uh, means a redistribution of uh, economic endowment to the whole population. Final remark, uh, we are in the era where we have in the global entirety enormous information in every respect. So <coughs> enhanced by the internet, by social media, media and uh, uh, all things, uh, including cryptocurrencies. This is in, a very important step toward a governance, but it's not enough. It is more information. It, uh, uh, it is important to have more information, but it can be confusing too. So we have to structure and regulate this important information system which exists globally. And uh, one of my hopes in this respect is that this uh, increasing information is combined with a redistribution of not only knowledge, but also with economic endowment. And this is the reason why, I repeat it, a global constitution based on a voting democracy will not bring very far. We have to complement it with an economic uh, uh, redistribution and steering mechanism far beyond Bretton Woods uh, agreements. Okay. Thank you.